Stuart, thank you for joining us. Thank you. So, what's the latest from Hinkley? So for Hinkley Point C, we started uh, after FID in 2016. Since then, we've met all of our significant milestones and more importantly, met them on plan. So in 2019, Unit 1, we delivered our most successful milestone today, which is what we call J0, so it's day zero of the project. It was achieved in June, bang on schedule from a schedule set three years ago, so we we're delighted with that. Unit 2 is exactly one year behind that, so overall, we're meeting our milestones, things are looking good, and most importantly, our safety performance is UK leading, and that gives me great pride in the work and the quality of the work our people are doing. So. These are the first reactors to be built in decades. How are you finding the people, the skills, and also updating those to the modern world? Oh, it's a really interesting question. You know, if you look at me personally, I joined the industry in 1986, uh, which was the construction of Hesham 2. And then we went on to do Sizewell B. So there are still a few of us around who were involved in the last build of Sizewell. So I think it's a combination of uh, gathering together the expertise we do have in the UK and be of no doubt, we do have a lot of experience in the UK already. The second key point is that we're very fortunate that we are number five and number six of EPR. We've also got Taishan, Flamanville, so we've got predecessors, so we're doing a really good job in taking resources from those projects and blending them with the expertise we have in the UK. And then thirdly, what we're doing is we're taking the best of UK construction and blending all of that together in a really diverse and inclusive way. So we have strong support from previous EPR, strong support from UK nuclear and UK construction, which is a bit more modern. So that's really the three pools of resources we're pulling together uh, to make Hinkley Point C a success. Are you having to find the resources and the people and the techniques in the UK or are you having to bring things in from abroad? So I think people often look at uh, Hinkley Point C as being a French project. Um, others look at it as a Chinese project. The reality is others look at it as a UK project, but it's all of the above. It's an international project. And on site today, we have around 5,000 people. Of those 5,000, over 4,000 of those people are UK-based people, UK-based construction workers. We have strong support from Scotland, Wales, Ireland. The construction workers we have working, 80% are UK-based. And of course, we're supplementing that with 20% of international uh, people who are coming in to help us with their expertise, who've worked on these projects elsewhere in the world. So when people think of it, is it, is it a UK project, France project, China project? It's all of the above, but predominantly the UK construction people are stepping up to the fold. Now, we do accept as we move into the erection phase very soon, next year, uh, the pit skills like welding, electrical skills, the UK has got a deficit of those skills. But rather than just rely on others, we are investing in apprenticeship training programs in schools. Uh, we're also investing in educational colleges. So. This year we've just opened a new welding school in Bridgewater where we will upskill local people into qualified welders. So we will be leaving a legacy well beyond uh, Hinkley Point C by the creation of this. Our supply chain partners are very supportive. And if you take Bill Finger, it's a German company, but we said, look, you know, we'll give you this contract, but what we want you to do is upskill UK skills. As a result, the uh, Pipe work for the turbine hall will be manufactured here in the UK, in the northeast of England, in a factory owned by Bill Finger, but where they will bring their technology, their skills from Dortmund, and they will teach us how to build nuclear class uh, welding systems here in the UK. And that's a commitment as part of that contract. So we are leaving legacies well beyond uh, Hinkley Point C. So obviously, once you're constructed, what happens to all those people? What happens to all those new skill sets that you've developed? There are a number of routes for the, uh, for the people. So the people we're employing directly were looking to build careers for those people. So if you're an engineer, as I was in 1986, I joined the industry in construction, in commissioning, and then I followed through with operations. You've got to remember an EPR will operate for 60 years plus life extensions. So a century long project, 10 years to develop, 10 years to build, 60 years to operate, then decommissioning. Well, we can offer people careers for the whole of their lives and more for at least two generations of people. So one route people will go as I did through into operations. The other route we hope the construction workers will move into is the construction of the next plant. And of course, Sizewell C 
is our next target. And to do that, we know we have to replicate Hinkley C design. That replication, that knowledge in these workers will transfer directly. And we intend to replicate the supply chain, the construction team, and the leadership team. So we get the benefit directly of that learning from one to the next project. And then hopefully beyond that. To achieve net zero, I believe we need much more than just four EPR. And I think what we're doing here is rebuilding the skills, competencies that we once had three decades ago to really build out a fleet of nuclear power plants. Then, of course, the nuclear family in the UK, we already operate plants, we decommission plants. It is a big, big, big industry which offers careers for these people well beyond the construction of HPC. So to a, a young person, perhaps going through an engineering degree, what would you say to them to encourage them to follow this path, that this new almost a brave new world in, in nuclear in the UK? I think nuclear is a, it's a very, very special technology. It requires a lot of care, a lot of attention. It's very high-end skills. And it's all about the ability to solve problems and find solutions in a highly critical area. So if you want to develop skills in engineering, to build one of these things is hugely exciting. To maintain an operator is equally challenging. Now, I've had this my 33rd year in nuclear, and. Uh, not one day I've ever been bored. There's always been new challenges, new opportunities. And, and for engineers, you know, I used to refer to my previous role as uh, MD of generation, running the plants as it's the uh, operation of the biggest train set in the UK. And it stretches your thinking. So as a new engineer, if you're looking for challenges, we're the place to be. If you're a new engineer and you want a quiet life, don't join us because uh, we, are, we are pushing the boundaries of technology and science for a positive way and uh, it's really exciting. I've never been bored and can't believe 33 years of my career have gone already. Uh, a little more to go yet before I'm finished, before I'm done. So what next? What next for me or what next for the project? Well, for the project, um, for the project, first of all, what we have to do is to complete our next major milestones. I have made this huge commitment personally that we will deliver our milestones on plan. And next year we'll see J0 delivered for unit two exactly one year ahead, uh, one year behind, sorry, of uh, unit one. But we've done that 1.6 times more efficiently. Why? Because we're learning. We're learning every day we learn. And the energy and passion on the site to learn more is growing every day. So next year we will see our move from a civils program to a multi-program. We'll see equipment arrive and we'll start to see the early assembly of that equipment ready for commissioning starting the year after. So. This plant's moving very, very quickly, and uh, it's really exciting to be part of that. For me personally, well, I get up tomorrow, do exactly what I did today, and look forward to energizing myself about the work others do, because to be the leader of such a project and see what humans can achieve, there's no better excitement in the world to, uh, to see that plant growing each and every day. So for me, delivering the project as warbles. Stuart, exciting times. Well, thank you very much for joining us. No problem. Thanks for all your time, and thanks for the opportunity to talk.